Hello everyone, and thanks for joining me for Making a Scene Volume 3. This was a fairly complex build, and not all of it was planned from the get-go, which just goes to show that you can make things up as you go along. Anyway, let's start. As usual, I started with a board of extruded polystyrene, which I cut in two, so that I could make a double depth base and I used some thinner extruded polystyrene board to make the river pattern. Hot wire foam factory's styrogoo was used to glue all of the polystyrene boards together. As you can see here I used an extra piece of thin XPS board underneath the river pattern to give the base even more depth. And this was because I'd be using hot wire foam factory tools to cut into the polystyrene. Specifically their freehand router tool, for which you must use their Pro Power Pack set to the second highest setting. The freehand router has a flexible yet stiff wire which is ideal for carving out river beds and channels. You can get some very neat cuts with it, but at this stage I wasn't interested in being too neat, knowing that the riverbed was going to be covered anyway. If you accidentally catch bits with the hot wire that you didn't want to, you can always glue it back in with a bit of Styrogoo, which I used again here with a bit of spare extruded polystyrene board to start building up the side and back walls of the diorama, which I held in place while it dried with a bit of masking tape. And then it was time to start building up the landform with rolls of paper and more masking tape to hold that in place. and I used scraps of foam from when I was cutting out the riverbed to fill in the gaps behind the paper and also in areas where I thought the land could do with bulking up a bit. And I just carried on with the masking tape and for no apparent reason left it until now to apply the third wall of the diorama. And indeed, the front wall. And again, any gaps I filled with extra bits of foam. And at the end of all of that, I had a basic idea of what the landscape was going to look like. To cut down the sides of the diorama, I used the sculpting tool, again by the hot wire foam factory, and the arm tensioner came in very handy for this. This tool is one of my favourites. It's so effective that it actually cuts through masking tape. Before applying modelling compound to the diorama, I needed to give the surface of the land something that the compound could actually stick to. So I just gave it a very thin layer of newspaper coated in diluted Mod Podge matte. Although you could just use PVA glue, but I didn't have any. Strangely, I found that the papier-mâché will stick to the masking tape, but the modelling compound won't. Or rather it will, but it's a lot harder to apply it because it just slips about all over the place as you apply it with your brush. Just a single layer of paper will do for this stage. And the modelling compound that I used for this was a variation on that model railroader's goop. Essentially paint, PVA, sculpt mould and grout, which I just mix together in a cup. The glue lending it flexibility and the sculpt mould and grout lending it rigidity and bulk. 
and the paint just a bit of colour. You could use any paint but I used brown because it meant I wouldn't have to go over the land again with an undercoat of brown paint. And you can spread this about with a palette knife or a lolly stick. And over the course of a few hours, perhaps overnight, it'll go off like concrete. However, I didn't want mine to dry before I started to apply my rock texture, and for this model I chose bark. And this is just good quality landscaping bark, which I bought from a home improvement store. This bark has a really nice natural looking rock texture to it. And I built up the sides of the canyon, pressing each piece of bark into the wet compound like a jigsaw puzzle. And then I filled in the gaps between the pieces of bark with sculpt mold, which I blended in with a wet brush. I was quite happy with the rocks at this stage, but not really happy enough, so I got out the milliput. This is a two-part epoxy putty with a quite slow cure time, making it ideal for sculpting. It basically just needs to be mixed in equal parts, and it's best to use a glove, as exposure to epoxy can cause irritation. In fact, many people are allergic to it. Because of the slow cure time of Milliput, I could afford to just map out where I wanted the extra rock texture to go before going in to shape the pieces with the lolly stick. I was just careful to blend the milliput in with the bark and the sculpt mould following the lines of my original sculpting so that it didn't just look like lumps of milliput stuck on the side of the model. And as a final touch I impressed the bark texture into the milliput. After a few hours that will be dry and it's time to go over the entire surface with white gesso. This not only acts as a base coat but it also has a slight texture to it which allows the paint washes that we're going to apply over the rocks to adhere to the surface. In fact, the first layer of paint was acrylic ink. This is black and it's watered right down and applied all over the rock surface. A bit of isopropyl alcohol sprayed onto a rag and then rubbed over the surface of the rock just takes some of the paint off the edges and then you can further highlight the rock surface with a dry brushing of off-white. No rocks are entirely grey, so I spotted a dilute mixture of yellow ochre paint over about two-thirds of the rock surface. And then using a pipette and some more of the black ink, I went in and accentuated the nooks, crannies and cracks of the rock. and I dabbed off any excess with a rag. And because I'd lost some of the highlighting, I went back in and re-dry brushed the edges of the rocks. The thing is, most of this will be covered up later, but you've always got a plan for what won't be covered up. And I carried on building up the color with weathering powder, a bright green and a muddy green, mixed with some water, which produces a fairly strong pigment. And I started applying this over the rock surface, sparingly at first, as I wasn't sure how green I wanted to go. It's easy to apply more later, but it's not so easy to take off excess. In fact, it's nigh on impossible. And once that liquid pigment had been applied, I went in with some dry weathering powder, which produces a much brighter tone to add depth and nuance to the moss.
and a further very light dry brushing with white just help to sharpen the edges. One thing I didn't film was giving the rock surface a spray with scenic glue before I sprinkled over some fine turf by Woodland Scenics. This is their mid-green variety. And then I went in with some Woodland Scenics coarse turf, this is also their mid-green variety, to add bushes, low-lying shrubs, etc. And then some Jarvis Heather mix and Woodland Scenics dark green bushes, which are coarser in texture than the coarse turf and both of these added depth to the vegetation. And all of this was fixed in place by giving it a good soaking with isopropyl alcohol and then dropping over some scenic glue, which is three parts water, one part matte medium and a few drops of dishwasher detergent. For the dirt texture on this model I used Vallejo European Thick Mud which is an acrylic paste with bits of twig in it. It goes on thick and fairly dark but it dries considerably lighter. It looks very realistic on its own but before it had, had a chance to dry I sprinkled over some sifted dried soil mixed with beige grout, not over the entire surface. I had some seafoam twigs covered in knock leaves left over from a previous tree making session and they made very nice little bushes. And I went over some of the vegetation with some mid green knock leaves. You don't have to do this but to my eye it lends the scene a more realistic look. And it was at this point that I realised I wanted my rocks to be even mossier. So I took some Mod Podge matte, mixed in some green weathering powder, some fine turf green blend by Woodland Scenics, gave it a good stir, added some more weathering powder, a bit of dark brown weathering powder a bit more fine turf and then pretty much went to town on the rocks I just thought if this is going to be a mossy canyon it might as well be a really mossy canyon in fact, I'm really happy that I was brave enough to take this step, which I sealed in place with another spray of scenic glue. And now I've got the rocks how I wanted them, it was time to start planning the waterfall. And for this, I made several long, thin beads of silicon corking on a spare plastic tray I had lying around. And before they dried, I dragged the tip of a skewer along them to texture them. Then I put them aside to dry while I prepared the epoxy resin for the river body. For this model I used two part water clear epoxy from CFS and it must be mixed in exactly equal parts. I stir the resin slowly so as to avoid introducing too many bubbles. And because this is a green canyon, I use some green acrylic ink to tint the resin. Bear in mind that a very little goes a very long way as you can see here. And to give the water a slightly murkier look, I also use some burnt umber acrylic ink. You want to keep stirring the resin for at least two minutes until it's thoroughly mixed. I then started pouring the resin in, but can you believe... I forgot to make the dam. So I hastily put up some masking tape and sealed that with some white glue. 
and even though the glue didn't have chance to dry, I continued pouring the resin and the dam held fast. My advice would be to let the glue dry before you start pouring the resin, just in case you make a nasty mess of your table. And though I was due to be using the silicon strands, I nevertheless dribbled some resin down the waterfall, the idea being that the rocks here would be wet. A soldering torch is a good tool to have for bursting the remaining bubbles in the resin. Just pass it over the surface of the resin lightly, being careful not to get too close, and also being careful not to set any of the foliage on fire. And while the resin dried, I could get on with making the vines. For these, I used jute twine, which I cut into lengths and then untwisted into their individual strands. So that I ended up with a nice spread of fibers. I soaked these thoroughly with scenic glue and then getting out my trusty pot of knock leaves medium green I sprinkled the leaves liberally over the strands. And then these could be moved onto a separate piece of paper to dry. Another variety of vines were made using green polyfiber by Woodland Scenics, which I stretched out into very thin strands, coated with scenic glue, and sprinkled over knock leaves medium green again. And this too was left to dry on the paper. Applying the vines is as simple as pressing them on where you feel they fit. Some of the leaves are bound to fall off, but that's okay because bare vines add texture to the piece. Scenic glue seals the ends in place. And some fine and coarse turf helps to blend the vines into the foliage. Here the colour is Burnt Grass by Woodland Scenics and some more of their Mid Green. And once again I gave the whole area a thorough soaking with isopropyl alcohol and with Scenic Glue. After 12 hours or so, the resin had cured and I could remove the masking tape. Where the resin has crept up the dam, you can remove it with a sharp knife and then dust any fallen leaves off the surface of the river with a brush because we're going to start work on the waterfall. The silicon should peel away fairly easily with a little help and then you can put a dab of silicon on the end of a skewer, attach that to one of the strands and then fix in place the waterfall. Of course you can always cut a bit off the end if you find it's a little bit too long. To blend in the silicon to the surface of the resin I use Structure Gel by Winder & Newton. This is a very thick acrylic paste and it dries completely transparent. And then it was time for perhaps my favourite stage of this process, adding ripples with Mod Podge Gloss. And because this river is actually fairly small, I go over the entire surface with the Mod Podge in a fairly thin layer. Before blowing it around with a straw to create realistic ripples. For the solitary big tree on this model, I raided a hedgerow on my way back from work. I drilled a hole in the bottom and put in a cocktail stick, and then I added further branches using more twigs from the hedgerow and some gel superglue. I made some very thin strands of polyfiber from Woodland Scenics. 
drape this over the branches. Cut away any loose strands. Gave it a quick spray with some spray mount. This stuff was a little too heavy for the job, but you make do with what you've got. Coated that with some coarse turf by Woodland Scenics. This is their mid green again. And then gave it the once over with my mid green knock leaves. A bit of tacky glue on the cocktail stick and a small hole bored into the surface of the model is enough to hold this tree in place. Now this is some old footage. For some smaller trees I used some weeds that had been dried collected from the side of the road, given a good coating of spray glue and then dusted liberally with knock leaves. These actually make some pretty convincing shrubby trees. And again I just bored a hole in the surface of the model and a bit of tacky glue was enough to hold the tree in place. Ground up fern leaves make a nice ground texture, simulating actual dried fallen leaves. And of course these must be sealed in place with isopropyl alcohol followed by scenic glue. The final stage of this model was to add white water. And for this I used Vallejo Snow and Foam, which is a very thick acrylic paint and really I should have painted the waterfall when it was still on the plastic sheet but I forgot and really there was no harm done and I was just careful to stipple it very lightly over the surface as this is a very thick paint and it dries very quickly and it's very easy to overdo the effect I find using a cocktail stick or skewer and a pointless technique very effective and I also find that going over the white water with some Mod Podge gloss just lends it a bit more of a shimmer. And now that the model was done, all that was left was to paint the sides. And on this occasion, I used a nice deep blue gray. I actually ended up adding a wisp of polyfiber to the bottom of the waterfall to simulate foam. Some people don't like this, but I do. I was very happy with how this model turned out. You can see in the pictures it's pretty hard to stop some of the leaves falling off the vines and ending up on the river surface, but then I'm not sure there's a river in the world without a few leaves floating along on it. Thank you so much for watching. I was blown away to receive over a million views on my last video, and I'm so happy that this Making a Scene series is inspiring some of you. Your support really does mean the world. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!